I hope you enjoyed the latest new music single from Syria. And now that I have your attention, I can share a gem in the DCS multiplayer scene that I feel gets often overlooked by many people, and that is the DCS Cold War 1947 to 1991 server. This video breaks down into three main parts. One, the state of DCS multiplayer servers. Two, how the Cold War server works and why it's fun. And three, some examples of some recent uh, flights uh, that I had on there to kind of show you why the server is special. If you are new to this channel, I focus on multiplayer sim gameplay. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. I don't know about you guys, but when someone asks me about what multiplayer servers there are in DCS, my mind just goes to a handful of servers. There's Growling Sidewinder, which boils down to a lot of BVR fighting, which with very little restrictions. There's Hoggett and Through the Inferno, which are the popular PvE servers. And then we get into the secondary servers like Blue Flag, which has thematic mission setups, but also very restrictive mechanics like lives and side locking. And then there's RSR, um, which has a heavy em emphasis on slinging or like a, actually having like a real ground war. Outside of the servers, my mind kind of draws a blank. I don't know what else there really is because they don't seem to have population when I'm on. And it's interesting because I felt for a very long time that DCS multiplayer is sorely missing a campaign oriented server that has a thematic mission setup but isn't restrictive, uh, where it dissuades players to play on it. Um, basically, we don't really have an equi equivalent of the IL-2 Finnish server on DCS, and it's like a, a big missing hole in the community. And that's kind of where the Cold War server steps in. I've been playing in there a lot lately, and it's starting to be one of my go-to servers. Now, the name really says it all. It's, it's a Cold War server, and all of the mission scenarios are set up to revolve around the MiG-21 and the F-5. Now, are there other planes? Yes, there are Sabres, Vigans, SU-25s, MiG-15s, MiG-19s, etc. But each scenario revolves around the MiG-21 and the F-5. And if you have either of these modules, you can play and be competitive on the server. The rest of the planes on the server are listed here, so feel free to pause if you want to find a module you have in here. Now, more or less, the mission scenarios break down with two main spawn areas. You need to do cold starts. Uh, there is an objective that is adjacent to the two sides at an off angle between the airfields. And in the objective area, there's some sort of objective, basically some form of ground units that need to be destroyed by one side and defended by the other. Both sides have the ability to spawn helicopters, to sling, and to create air defenses or EWR systems. And missions last anywhere from two to eight hours. Now, I have said this already, but I may not have brought it home. This is a Cold War server, and this means there are no Fox 3 fights. Most of the kills are happening with heaters or guns. There are ground targets that people do care about, so there is a mix of aircraft coming in low and others protecting them. From my time on the server, there are actually sometimes organized groups, or at least women working together. There are even seems to be people who are willing to human GCI to help the side out. And for a brief moment in this mess that is DCS multiplayer right now, you can enter into a thematic mission scenario where people are flying historical plane sets, flying with a purpose that isn't just to do air to air for the sake of racking up kills. And honestly, it's a nice change of pace and the server does really have its moments. And one example of that is what I'm showing you here. I snuck up on two F5s. They were hanging out by my airfield. I saw them trying to get to my airfield because I was doing bar cap and they weren't paying attention and I went ahead and, and splashed one and this guy probably had no idea that I was behind him and he immediately dove out and I went high and took the high position so this guy's not getting anywhere anytime soon and this sort of fight feels like something that you would have in IL-2 especially on the Finnish server where people are doing bar cap trying to suppress airfields and this is kind of where it gets neat uh, flying again because so much of the fighting in DCS is Fox 3 base and the multiplayer servers so to kind of get back down to the roots you know using Fox 1s and Fox 2s it, it gets I really find it interesting and that's why I'm kind of vibing a lot with this server and the situational awareness of where you're flying really falls into place here because there's some sort of ground war happening and what you'll see here is because this guy panicked he, when he tried to egress out, he flew right into one of our SAM sites, which was defending our airfield. So he has to rush away from it, and he already got pegged by it. I didn't know it at this point, but I'm here to, to come finish him, basically. 
So we'll start to transition this video now into some other examples and, and I'll kind of break it down of like why this could really only happen on the, on the Cold War server and you know hopefully you guys feel inspired to try it out. So the best equal to the Cold War server in IL2 terms is Combat Box. Cold War does not have a real dynamic campaign. It's more scenario based so it actually feels very close to Combat Box. There's a, a limited plane set that's thoughtfully curated um, it's built around a theme or a time, and there's very interesting mission scenarios. Now, the fighting on Cold War really happens mostly on the deck. Um, there are no planes that have like super great radars. Uh, everyone flies really low because everyone's trying to hide from each other's AWACS. And in this scenario, you can see I'm basically cutting trees. I'm flying super low. There's a big fur ball up ahead. You can see the equal signs are, e are friendlies on the radar, and, and the single lines are enemies. So I'm totally burning into this furball, which I haven't seen it yet. And it, the reason I haven't seen it yet visually, one, I'm focusing too much on my radar, and two, there's kind of this haze. And a lot of the maps have this haze where it kind of keeps people within certain altitude ranges, um, which I think is an interesting idea. So here from the right, we see a fight. Uh, it's a MiG-19 chasing after something. I think it's an F5. And, and when I'm seeing this fight go down, I. Because I was so focused on my radar, I didn't really see it until I, I blew past it. So I'm cautiously watching, and I do see this missile go off. And making sure it's not coming toward me, I, I kind of chaff and flare. So I don't really know who, who who went down here. And this is an F5. Again, Cold War, you have to look visually to really pick up what things are when you're this close. And here, this guy didn't see me, and I'm able to splash him. He was so tied up with the MiG-19. with the MiG-19. And unlike him, I actually look back after I fired, and I see something crawling up behind me. And here we begin this fight. This is an F5. Um, because I'm, I'm newer to the server, this F5 versus MiG-21 matchup, I'm still getting a, a feel for. Uh, I confirm it's an F5, and I'm noticing now that me trying to climb away and pull up and around isn't, isn't working. I'm too slow. So I'm going to try to fight this guy in a flat turn. And I don't know if he has missiles or not. He could have. He could be out. So I, you, you'll see myself flaring, uh, anticipating a, a potential IR shot. And I think people don't give the MiG-21 as much credit as it should because of the delta wing design you can really whip it around he, I didn't really have the speed to plead um, going into this fight so I'm not really able to whip it around as much as I, as I wanted to and I'm trying to just out sustain his turn um, and I'm kind of second guessing myself because it looks like his nose is pointed toward me and I'm feeling like I'm, I'm losing this fight And you've probably heard me flaring a couple times. So at this point, I'm thinking he probably doesn't have missiles. He's only relying on cannons. So I decide to extend away and, and use my superior speed to try to just get away from him to see if I can change this fight up. For those who play IL-2, this sort of fight should look pretty similar to how some fights go down in aisle two um, energy who can turn better who can't can you get away these are things that don't really happen in dcs um, and it's very unique for this uh, that's why the cold war server is so unique because you could actually start doing bfm fighting like regularly like this, this is not a super uncommon fight to happen on the cold war server so this guy is spraying and, and, and i am running uh, I'm slowly extending away from him. That little, you know, I'm trying to keep an eye on him. And I actually start to scissor, and you can hear me pull back on my engine. And we have another con that appeared, and I'm not sure what this is at this point. So it looks like something else is shooting at him, so it's a friendly. And I'm trying to do a scissor. Um, not really like a rolling scissors. I mean, this is not a 190. Uh, but I'm trying to make it work here. And by deploying flaps and rolling, um, and luckily with that other guy distracting him, I'm able to make him overshoot.
And I got good tone. And that's a second target down. Got a little lucky with uh, the additional help. But hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of what sort of things can happen. And as soon as this fight's over, I see another enemy contact again, single dashes or enemy on the radar. And I line it up with the radar and I'm able to lock and he's actually very close. And I get a good tone and These old heater missiles aren't great because they're so old. I have to send another one out. And that's a third splash. So boom, 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 three kills, all happening after an initial fight, recognizing that I was getting snuck up on a second fight that included, you know, turns, extension, reversal, uh, someone coming in to help, and then, and then two kills after that. Let's go into a different example here. Uh, I'm going after a target, and I am playing with the wingman. Now, this server doesn't need a lot of population for fun to be had. Uh, sometimes having just 15 or 12 people on the server is just enough, and you can fly with wingman. It is much trickier to fly with wingman with jets because of the speed, the limited visibility with your radars, and also just DCS spotting. We're gonna be transitioning into in-game audio soon, but I missed this guy, I overshot, and I'm looking at it, and I, and I pull up, and my wingman's here and I'm talking with him and we're trying to basically make sure that we both don't die and let's go into audio right now. Going vertical on this guy. Yep, I see him. Oh shit, he's shooting at me. Oh shit, I thought he dove away from me. Climbed into me, motherfucker. Okay, I'm gonna fight this guy over this little lake thing, okay? Okay. Are you, are you on him? Yep. Okay. Just let me know if you want me to drag in direction. Oh damn, my gun's... Was it loaded? Yep. Fuck. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna straighten him out. Okay. Bring him right a little bit. Fox two. Might be on different guys. Splash. Nice. Okay, that was fucking cool. So a simple little dragon bag, something that is not unfamiliar to IL two. If you were trying to do this dragon bag on, on Growling Sidewinder and DCS, it would be almost next to impossible because of the reach of, of the missiles. And flying with a wingman in this game, or in the server, isn't required. You can be successful just flying solo, but it, it adds an interesting element to fly with someone. Uh, the visibility is really limited just because of the radar and, and again, DCS spotting. Here's an example of us uh, trying to pick up targets and because so many people are flying on the deck, the mission designer has added self-propelled uh, anti-aircraft artillery, and that gives visibility, uh, or adds visibility, because as targets fly over it, they get shot up, and then you can pick up targets. Um, you know, the, the, the missions are very well thought out, and the design, the admin, I think his name's uh, Alpenwolf, um, he put together some interesting missions. Here we are proposing an airfield as a target, that as we get over the airfield, boom, flak, and because of that, um, the enemy in the area are going to see us. So we decided just to blow past and keep going because we, we know people are going to be chasing after us. A lot of the missions happen on the deck or, or revolve around the deck. Uh, the admin did say that he's going to be adding new missions. One's going to be about a B-52 interception interception mission. I think that should be really neat. MiG-21 is trying to get after B-52s and the F-5 will need to escort them. I think that'll be really neat. It's something really unique. I've never seen that happen in DCS before and multiplayer at least. So we talked about the good, let's talk about the bad. One bad thing, this server does not seem like it has population all the time. In the European time zone and US East, it holds a decent amount of players. Even it gets full during those times. As soon as uh, Pacific prime time creeps in, the server pop seems to drop off. I don't know why, I don't know what <laughs> what's different between the US East Coast and the West Coast but the West Coast players don't seem like they play a lot on the server. I'm guessing it's just the Europeans logging off. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. This server doesn't need that many people to be playable. 10, 12, 15 players is more than enough. Another bad thing, well, not a b bad thing, but you know, even though the Cold War spans a very long time, all of the missions base are based around the MiG-21 and F-5. I 
I kind of wish we had some Korea maps um, to kind of mix it up a little bit. I can see why with DCS's business module, why the admin decided to really only focus on the F5 and MiG-21. You only need one module and you can play every single mission and never be locked out. So I get the idea. I, I just kind of wish we had a little bit more variety, but I get it. Beyond that, I would recommend for people to try the server out, especially those who have the MiG-21 and the F5 and hardly ever fly it. Like You can be competitive on this server. And I just wanted to share this with you guys. I find it very interesting when designers, server admins take the same game and they transform it in their own little way and they make their own little world and it's interesting to see how players react to it. So I would recommend to try this out. You will probably see me on there. Please consider consider liking, subscribing, and I hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.